They say that pleasure is achieved through doing, rather than having, through experiences, not objects. I tend to agree with that, except with objects that we use to actually create those experiences, especially anything with an engine and four wheels. My love for all things motoring starts way back in the 70s before Doppelkaplonskitriba is an item on the Porsche options list. I'm amazed I got that out. Only took me about seven goes, which you didn't see. <laughs> it starts with me asking my dad as he's driving, you know, what does this do and what does that do and why are you doing this? You know, and this goes on for some time until I imagine he tires of me asking the same questions over and over. And he decides to give me my very first driving lesson in his 1970 Chrysler Valiant, AKA the bulldozer. I still remember how nervous I am inching along that dirt track in the Mount Martha Reserve, but I also remember experiencing something that burns into my brain, a recognition that I'm doing something that I know I will always wanna do, drive. A decade later, I begin working for Stabler magazines containing two motorcycle and five at one time car publications. Some of the most unforgettable moments included rolling up to my folks' house in a Lamborghini on P plates. P plates, my preparationary uh, plates for somebody who's you know very young and um, has only just started driving. Ripping through the desert on the skids of a Bell Jet Ranger helicopter, literally six feet off the deck during the Australian Safari, for which I was the official photographer shooting the staircase to the moon in the remote desert town of Broome before walking alone through Baron McAlpine Zoo in the dark to attend a private function hosted by Mitsubishi. That was genuinely unique and I don't think any amount of money could have paid for that kind of experience. But epic as all of that was, that period also gave me a whole lot more than slap me, I must be dreaming memories. It also provided me with an insight into what you can do with a motor car especially a good one on a twisty bit of tarmac. I remember on the 10th of August, 1990, finding myself at a triple BMW launch. It was for the 318iS, the 850i, the V12, and the E34 M5. And I'm ripping around Queensland's Norwell Motor Complex in the M5 at what I think is a pretty good pace. But I'm soon joined in another car by Formula One champion, Alan Jones. And no matter how hard I try, I just can't get him off my ass. No surprise there, obviously, given his resume and my pimples, except that he's in the lowly 318 IS. I'm in the M5, and the car he's driving has about 35% the horsepower of the one I'm in, and he's got three passengers on board. I learned that day that um, how you drive is far more important than what you drive, that technique matters a whole lot more than machine. 
And it's made even clearer by Jones's advice afterwards when he actually does a few laps with me in the M5 with me driving. And he says, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. And 35 years later, that advice still serves me well. Doesn't it? So over the years, I've learned that driving pleasure is possible in almost any car, regardless of horsepower or pedigree. I've also seen how sports cars can elevate the whole experience um, to a whole other level, even at sensible speeds, just because of the way they're built and the way they uh, communicate with you on the road. Some of the best sports cars many would agree, hail from the northern Stuttgart borough of Zuffenhausen, where every Porsche 718 and 911 is built, along with the Taycan. My first Porsche experience was in a Tiptronic 964 Carrera 4 in 1989. And since then, I've sampled the 944, the 968, the 928, the Boxster, Cayman, and of course, other 911s. And of all the sports cars I've driven from Toyota, McLaren, Lamborghini, Porsche, Honda, or Aston Martin, Nissan, Mazda, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Lotus, none have tickled my soul quite like the Porsches, with the exception of the spectacular Honda NSX and the petite Mazda MX-5. In October 2022, I finally bought my first Porsche, a 981 Boxster. I've enhanced it in a few subtle ways and a couple more enhancements are on the way, but even in its most basic form, it's a spectacular driver's car. It's planted, but agile. It's solidly made, but not overweight. And it's beautifully styled without screaming for attention. It's not the kind of car that you find people driving down to a cafe district just to pose. It's not that kind of car. It's not screaming, look at me, look at me, like some Italian sports cars. It is, as far as sports cars go, very close to perfect. This car, the 718 Cayman GTS 4 litre, is even closer to perfect. Except for its seats, in which neither Bobby nor I could find a comfortable setting, despite, or perhaps because of, adjustments possible in 15 directions. I've learned a lot about cars and driving since my first steer in the bulldozer back in the 1970s. But through all of that, a few life lessons have proved valuable too. Chief among them, that life is random. It's a one in 400 trillion chance to be born. And life is also very short. So, you know, as far as I see it, it's important to create experiences that make us happy. From my perspective, I recommend finding a couple of things that really excite you, that you really get pleasure from, and then engaging with them as often as you can, no matter how dorky or obscure or unimportant they might seem to others. It doesn't matter how others perceive the things that you're into. For me, it's cars, photography, writing, and the outdoors, and making videos like these. I love making videos. Two, there's no real meaning in life, but the meaning that we bring to it in each moment. I mean, if you consider that photo of the Earth from the rings of Saturn, that iconic photo, it really throws into stark relief just how tiny and insignificant our whole planet is in the context of the universe. We're tiny, we're a speck of dust, and everything will be over before we know it. This is why I say it's so important to um, to not look so much for the meaning of life, but to look for 
the meaning and the things that you do and the people that you interact with and to appreciate those interactions for what they are. So I guess my point in all of that is to, you know, not to complicate things any more than they are, you know, simplify where possible. Things are complicated enough as they are, largely due to our own, you know, doing. Uh, but simplify things where possible and you'll be less stressed, you'll appreciate everything more and generally you'll be happier. Third, and this ties into this, is there are no gold stars at the end. So, you know, be childlike, be grateful for what you have and be generous because it's going to be over in a blink and you'll soon be forgotten. And even if you weren't forgotten, even if somebody built another Taj Mahal and slapped your name on it in your honour, the point is you wouldn't even know it because, well, you'd be dead. So if you love cars the way I do, consider planning a day where you reacquaint yourself with the simple joy of driving without a particular destination in mind, without any purpose other than driving. Just you and your machine of choice. Turn off your phone's notifications, switch off the news on the radio and just drive. Because driving is an experience that despite 300,000 years of modern evolution has only been available to us for the last 100, 100 out of 300,000. That's incredible when you think about it. I mean, how lucky are we to be born in the last century where this sort of stuff is possible? And final suggestion, if you wanna amplify the experience, then take some photos of your car and the landscape while you're at it. Because on the time scale that I just mentioned, these two extraordinary activities, driving and photography, well, they weren't available just three minutes ago. We are genuinely living in a golden age. Anyway, if you'd like to learn more about how to photograph cars and landscapes, then you might enjoy these videos. See ya.